Hi YouTubers, Nix user here. So today I've got a bit of a tutorial for you for installing FreeBSD under KVM which isn't as straightforward as one would uh, expect. So anyway, I'm just going to my FreeBSD directory in which I have the original image that I downloaded which is compressed with the XZ format, now the compression algorithm. I also have the ISO which I've extracted from this file here and I've also done the checksum uh, on it to verify that it's uh, actually correct. So we'll just open up Vert Manager. You could do this through uh, Versh. Uh, you could uh, also uh, do this purely on the command line using uh, KVM Chemo I believe but um, for ease of demonstration we'll just do this uh, the GUI way. So we're going to um, start creating a new virtual machine. I'm just going to go and grab the ISO. So you can see we're using the ISO image that I uh, extracted. Uh, it's tried to automatically detect the operating system, but as usual with KVM, no such luck with uh, FreeBSD detection. So we'll move on. We'll change the change the RAM that's available to 4096 megabytes or 4 gigs and since we have 8 CPU threads we'll move this up to 4 CPU threads that are available to the virtual machine just to speed things along a little. So moving forward we'll accept that there's a 20 gig uh, disk image that we'll use and we will change the name to FreeBSD12 and we're just going to customize the configuration uh, prior to install. So what we're going to need to do here is we're going to use UEFI OVMF. You'll need to have installed that um, via your package manager first. In this case I'm on Debian 9, so I needed to install this via the usual repositories. Uh, I like to just um, change this to copy the CPU host configuration. I'm not sure why it's using Westmere. Uh, the other thing that I wanted to raise about this is this is so that we get access to a syscon frame buffer. So we'll begin the installation at this point. You can see Tiano Core, uh, the firmware has started, which is that's related to OVMF, I was discussing before. And we might as well at this point um, set this scale display to never and then view in full screen just to avoid those distractions. We just press enter there you can also press 1 uh, to boot into multi-user mode and I want to show you something that might occur to you so at this point uh, there's no further uh, action from the um, from init so therefore I had to work out why uh, this was freezing up. So I thought to myself as I was going through the menus, I saw text consoles and I thought let's go to uh, to serial. And nothing started here but I press enter. And uh, let's go back and see if... No, you can see here that nothing has changed here, but uh, never fear when you actually go through the installation. Uh, once it's done, it uh, it works fine. So we'll just uh, view this again. In, well, we can't view it in full screen, but um, we can just go ahead and press install. And we'll continue with the default key map. And we'll say, uh, we'll call it FreeBSD, this host. I'm not going to install anything special here like the ports tree or the uh, system source tree. I won't, won't be looking at ports or the um, or the kernel or other system source files. We'll go OK. I'm going to use a guided disk setup. Use the entire disk. Uh, here's something for you. you. You're going to most likely choose GPT and attempt to use MBR will fail because we're using UEFI on KVM. We have the GPT volume EFI as you would normally expect. Uh, then we have uh, our root partition and the FreeBSD swap. Uh, this is fine, one gig. Uh, you know, I allocated four, uh, four gig of RAM, and it used to be the advice that you could just halve it and say that's the amount of swap space. But uh, with very large amounts of RAM available today, I, I usually don't find myself swapping. 
but uh, let's go OK. And we'll commit. So this overall won't take too long. What will take a little bit of time is the installation of Xorg and we'll be using i3 as our test case with that D menu as a menu just uh, to see that we can get a working uh, desk a desktop uh, with uh, 1080 graphics. So in this installation where I find it's a little bit slow and not providing any value I'll just fast forward in the edit. We just need to add some details here so I'm just going to put a generic password for this virtual machine. I would like to use uh, IP version 4. I will use DHCP. That's going to get me an IP. I'm not going to use IP version 6 and I'm just going to OK that. Uh, I'm going to press 7 to go to Australia, go OK, and I just press 1 and then 1 1 and then I end up on Western Australia where I'm located. Yes, AWST does look reasonable. We don't need to change the date, that's correct. We don't need to change the time, that is also correct. Uh, at this point we can choose some demons that we would like to run. I would like to run MouseD, I would like to run NTPD. Uh, not very important uh, in this particular case, but sure, for demonstration purposes, that's fine. I'm not going to install PowerD uh, simply because I'm in a VM and I doubt that will have any significant effect given the host is the one that's uh, rolling with power management at the moment. And there's some security settings here that we can enable, but uh, I'm not going to bother with that either. I would like to add a user, so I'm going to add Nix user. You just go through this and uh, you don't until you get to this one where you have to uh, enter a password. So I'm just going to put, uh, in other words, another uh, throwaway password. And no, we're not going to lock the account, and that's fine. No, we don't want another user, and, and that's as simple as the base installation. Um, so we would like to reboot. Now I'm going to change the resolution by pressing Escape when Tiano Core comes up and that's to change the UFI frame buffer resolution. So just give that a moment. Okay, so you need to just go into the device manager, uh, go into the OVMF platform configurator, and we just need to go down to, in this case, I would like a 1920 by 1080 resolution, and I'm gonna press F10 to save, and press Y to confirm, and we escape, and then we will reset this system and you can see the frame buffer is now running well it was running in um, in 1080 but uh, it won't show up properly until we actually boot so just give this a moment here it's not the fastest boot loader out well in this case it's not the fastest loader of the kernel you can see the resolution has now changed for VT and it won't take too much longer before we're in a usable terminal. You can see here that it managed to get past that SM bus point that it didn't for the installer. Uh, that's fine. So we're going to go root. So we're going to want to install um, Xorg uh, i3 i3 status MD menu. That's basically. Uh, what we want uh, at the moment package isn't installed so we need to bootstrap it so we'll install that now this will take a little bit of time depending on your uh, internet connection speed So it's quite a bit to uh, install there, 203 packages. Proceed with the action. If I had done this via ports, it would take a much larger amount of time. It might even take a couple of hours to do this. And uh, since I'm not doing a recompile with GCC or anything like that, um, then uh, yeah, it's largely unnecessary uh, in this case because ports 
um, will defer to the package management system once all packages are built. Uh, it's very nice actually how uh, ports and package are uh, integrated together basically with ports delivering the build environment uh, for those packages and then um, offloading to package once those are done. But uh, in this case no customizations are required. So now that's done, we can get on with the process of configuring Xorg for a syscon frame buffer. So I'll just go Xorg configure. At this point, don't worry about that error just down there. But we're just going to copy um, xorg.conf.new to user slash local slash etsy slash x11 xorg.conf. Okay. And then we're going to vi. That guy there. I haven't got Vim installed in, at present on this. And we'll look for vis Visa. We don't want that. We want Syscon's frame buffer. Now I read this online on one of the forums on how to do this, so it's not my good work. But uh, I just thought anyway that you might like to to know how to do this. Uh, so the next thing uh, that we need to um, do is just a minor configuration issue with. Um, i3, so we're just going to copy slash user slash local slash edg slash i3 slash config, and we're just going to do it slash home slash nix user slash dot config. Ah, oh, might not even have a dot config. That's okay. So what we'll need to, we'll do we'll need to do that in a moment. But um, so we're going to start x now as the um, nix user account. And it works, which is uh, great, except for the fact that we don't have uh, i3 uh, working at the moment. So we'll just go back and uh, modify. And we'll just say uh, exec i3. Right, and then we, what we do is we'll get out of this instance of, um, of x. Close x down. And we'll start X again. It'll ask us about the configuration. Uh, we will say we'll, um, we'll generate the config. Blah. Now I don't know if that's actually going to do what I want it to do. So no. And we'll just again just oh, no. We won't go back to our Debian machine. We'll just go back to our X. We're going to copy that file over. So copy slash user slash local slash uh, Etsy slash i3 config to our own config and then what we'll do is we'll start x again and we'll have a nice good uh, config file now that we can we can use um, you can do your own customizations to that but yeah now you've got d menu and all that working so that's that's basically it uh, what i wanted to show you today is a summary is that you need to uh, use the, uh, the serial terminal uh, to be able to install FreeBSD on KVM at the moment. Um, you also need to use um, UEFI. Um, you know, uh, you don't, I mean, going back to the, that issue about using UEFI, you probably don't actually need to use UEFI if you don't care about your X, X Hawk working. But in this case, getting X Hawk to work properly. Uh, require the use of UFI, but then you've got that issue with stalling on init. It's not really stalling, it's just not to, uh, updating the frame buffer. And so therefore you need to go into the serial terminal to do that. So anyway guys, I hope you liked that tutorial. Uh, if you did, uh, please press the like button. If you'd like to receive more of this sort of content, press the subscribe and, uh, and click the bell. And I'll be right back with another video next time. Bye now.